Hello, welcome back. In this part, we're going to be doing the baking of the normal map, uh, the ambient occlusion and a color ID map, as well as various steps involved in just general setup and uh, keeping the scene organized. So what we're going to be doing is breaking the model um, into different parts and then moving them so that we've got the high poly legs and the low poly legs overlap the high poly and low poly brackets overlap um, but they're away from the legs so that the normal map doesn't overlap when we use uh, either the extrusion or cage methods I think I'll show you both um, just so you know what I'm talking about uh, so an easy way I find of doing this is just using um, blender units so I'll literally just grab pieces and move them say 0.2 or 0.4 or 0.6 just to separate all the pieces out but just look over your model and see what needs to be broken and separated uh, that's a bit too far that was I think that was a meter that might be why uh, I keep forgetting this this model is quite small it's about if I say about 20 centimeters square um, because it is mo modelled to the correct size of an actual claymore. So yeah, I'm just going to move these back 0.2 and 0.4 on the y-axis. And then you need to do the exact same pieces to the exact same measurements on the low poly. So 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and the same with the legs and then the brackets. We don't need to move the text that's on the front of the high poly because that will be projected onto the front of the low poly. And if you just click the visibility toggles, you can see they're overlapping perfectly. And then we're going to join all of the low poly pieces together. The more separate pieces you have, the longer it takes to do the bakes. So it is a good idea, as much as possible, to join everything back together into one piece. Uh, so I'm going to split the windows, one for a shader editor and one for an image editor. Next we're going to set up a new image for the low poly. This is the normal map we're baking. Uh, we're going to do it at 4K, so just select those fields and, and put a times 4 on the end. Uh, and that will make it 4K. Uh, all of the high poly pieces can be merged into one object. Then on the low poly we're going to add a material. Add in an image texture. This doesn't need to be plugged into anything yet. And change that to the image uh, that we made above. Change it to non-colour. That step is very important otherwise you'll get a very funky uh, normal map that won't uh, display properly. Okay, scroll down to the bake settings and we're going to change that over to normal. Selected to, av uh, selected to active and I've already done some trial and error and I know that point 0035 uh, works as a good extrusion value. Um, so with that selected we select the high poly then the low poly and click bake. I'm going to time lapse the baking so you don't have to sit there and watch watch that progress bar for ages like I had to. Okay, and that's a fairly clean bake. I do know that there were some errors on the the cylindrical details on the top of the model make sure you save the the normal map out had some bits that didn't cover the um, higher poly and with that you'll get some artifacts so here I'm just going to show you how to do it with a cage instead so we've combined the high poly gave it a material and changed it to bright red and next we've duplicated the low poly and put it in the scene collection and hide the low poly folder 
I'm going to rename this duplicate as the cage and switch into viewport shading so we can see the high poly which is in bright red and the cage that we've just duplicated um, that's in, in sort of whitish grey now if we select that we can go um, if we search for the shrink and fatten which I've got set to sh shift alt s and then we can slide that and it will inflate that piece and we want to do it so that it covers covers all of the higher poly and if you did this from zero you could take note of the distance in the top left corner of how much you've um, increased it by and then just use that as the extrusion value instead of using the cage that's how I got the extrusion value before um, but it did miss some of these inner corners on this piece in particular which I'll show you now so you see there some of the red is just catching through the corners um, you can manually move your cage to do to wherever you want so I'm just going to select those faces and scale them on the x-axis just until it covers that red can be a little hard to see with the seams you can turn the seams visibility off if you want to um, but I think that's fine for now okay so that cage is covering everything there is some red shown there that's on the back of those pieces because we deleted the face um, that's facing inwards because it won't be seen anyway and just look around everything else everything else is completely covered so you, sh you can't see any of the high poly red material Let's switch back into shaded mode okay and scroll down to uh, your bake settings and then it's exactly the same procedure as before change the bake type to normal only this time we're going to select a cage and select the cage object that we've renamed earlier so instead of adding the extrusion we're just going to use the cage then it's exactly the same setup as before shader editor at the bottom image editor at the top this will get you a more precise and cleaner result than the other one But on a simpler object, the um, the extrusion thing is is a quicker way of doing it. Okay, check all those settings. Everything correct. Select the high poly, select the low poly, and just click bake. okay and there we have it you can make sure you save this out whenever you render an image uh, in the image editor like that you'll see there's little asterisk appears next to where it says image which means it's not saved yet uh, next if you hide the high poly and connect up the low poly Uh, what I usually do here is make a duplicate of the um, of the low poly. I've caught the one from the high poly there as well. I've just noticed. Um, I'm just going to move that back into the high poly folder where it should be. I think I caught that. When I, when I moved the duplicate low poly out, I had the high poly selected as well, so it moved it out of that folder. Um, there is a um, a reason I want a duplicate of the low poly as well. Um, so firstly, I'm going to reassemble the parts so that they are um, back with the rest of the body, so it's all one piece again. Just going to join these mirrored parts together so I don't have to do everything twice. 
and where I moved these before I did 0 0.2, 0 0.4 it's just a case of doing negative 0 0.2, negative 0.4 okay they're all back where they should be and join them all back together swap this over to rendered view and this is now the low poly with the normal map uh, just going to change the HDRI value up to 1 just so we can see it a bit better and darken the material and you can see that that um, it's catching all the text, it's catching the screw threads there is a slight bit of uh, normal map error on the rounding around the casing um, that's because we used those bits came out really good, those notches that's because we used sub D for the silhouette part of that rounding so if we had actually modelled the rounded corners on there that wouldn't have been an issue uh, I don't think it's too noticeable though, so I'm just going to leave it that as it is. Uh, just change the roughness to make it more shiny, like a green plastic. These things are generally plastic coated. Okay, I'm just uh, cutting back to a previous saved file now just to show you how to do the um, ambient occlusion. Uh, it's pretty much exactly the same process as a normal map, only uh, you just select ambient occlusion instead of a uh, normal map. Uh, the, the ambient occlusion map is useful for uh, two reasons. One, when I do the procedural texturing, I'm going to mix it over the top um, of the base colour so that it uh, adds those shadows in. And then I'm also going to use it later when I've bake the procedural texture down into PBR materials I'm going to multiply it over the top of the diffuse texture uh, again ambient occlusion is non-colour so it's just black and white down to the bake settings change it to ambient uh, select it to active uh, I'm just going to use the the extrusion value from before Select them both and click bake. Yeah, that's it, and you'll see your ambient occlusion map is basically shadow information so it will darken up all the crevices like you'll see around the text there's a uh, shadowing because there's a slight crevice between where the, the text sticks out again don't forget to save the image and then again I've reverted back to another previous file as I recorded these all separately uh, this time we're going to record um, we're going to uh, render out a color ID map. Now, depending on what, how, um, how complex your model is, you might want lots of different masks for different areas. Um, this basically allows you to use procedural materials in Blender, similar to if you was texturing in, say, Substance Painter. Um, so I'm basically going to color part of the model in one color and then select specific parts of the model in a different colour and then run, render that out as a diffuse map which I can then make into masks in Photoshop so these bits I'm just going to assign them a different material I'm just going to make those bright red so it's very obvious which parts they are uh, in case you wondered what I did on the screen I turned off um, the sub D visibility just so I can select the actual original faces that make up those specific parts so just part on the leg and the bits with the threads on I'm going to make those a separate material so I'm just selecting the end piece and then growing the selection right down to the actual corner so past one support loop but not past the other 
Okay, assign those the same material. So yeah, we've got the, that bright red on the screw part and on the leg part. Then it's just the same process again. Uh, we're just baking down the color information. Yeah, and just do everything at 4K um, to keep it all, all the same. When you're baking these, you don't actually have to connect the image, um, the image nodes up to anything um, to do the bake. So you can add as many of them as you like and bake them all separately if you want to. Uh, again, I'm just going to use the the um, extrusion values from before. With the diffuse, turn off the direct and indirect light as well, um, because you only want the color information. And there you see you get uh, the red and the green in all the correct places of the UVs. I did save that with alpha transparency, which wasn't necessary. Uh, over in Photoshop now, we're going to turn this into a mask. Uh, so I'm just going to use that that green color as a, on a layer underneath, just so we haven't got the transparency in there. And then I'm going to select all the red, turn off contiguous. I'm not sure if that's how you say that word. Um, but select all the red, and we're basically going to make that completely white and everything else black. And obviously if this was um, a model with multiple parts that you wanted to texture separately, um, then you'd do a mask for each part with each part in white and everything else in black. And back, back, black for the background as well there. Okay, so that's the color mask. Just going to name that. Uh, just save it as a PNG. Uh, that's fine. Okay, back over in Blender, uh, we're just going to set up the the uh, the duplicate low poly that we're going to do all the texturing work on. I'm just going to snap these pieces back into place. Uh, still got the low poly, the other low poly showing there, so I'm just going to hide that. Yeah, just select these pieces. G minus 0.4 on the y axis, and then join it all back together. Okay, split the view. Uh, this is just a point of setup ready for texturing in the next part. So on the new low poly, we're going to add a new material, uh, move the output over, and we're going to need two principal BD BSDF shaders, and then we're going to combine those through a mix shader. Just type mix, mix shader, and drop that in. I'm going to have one going into the top, one into the bottom. And then the colour ID mask that we just made in Photoshop, the black and white image, I'm going to plug that into the factor. So just find that on my computer. Change it to non colour because it's just black and white. The only thing you use colour for, really, other than maybe emission, is the diffuse. And you'll see that that splits those materials, so one material uh, is separated from the other. Uh, next we're going to add in the normal map that we made, which was called Low Poly Cage. Again, change it to non-colour. 
Uh, next we need to add in a normal map to convert it into normal data. And then we're going to plug that into both materials normal slots. And you'll see the screw heads appear on one when I put it on there and the uh, text on the front will appear on the other. Just checking that's actually working properly. Oh yeah, that's the one for the main body. And then the other one is the one with the screw threads. That's it. Just going to position them down here somewhere. Change the material colours just so we can see. Most claymore mines that I've seen in clips and pictures and stuff have a kind of pale, pale green colour. And that other part, I'm going to make that metallic, so just so it's got a lot of difference from the rest of it. As those parts with the screws on are something to do with the charge that triggers the thing, I'm assuming they're metallic so that they conduct. Uh, next, the uh, ambient occlusion that we baked out, we can use that over the top. So that's also non-colour. Uh, to use that, we're going to use a mix shader, a mix RGB shader, sorry. Change that to multiply and set it to 1. And we're going to copy over the base colour for slot 2, and then plug that into the base colour, and you'll see that that... Uh, as the ambient occlusion to that first material. Uh, we might need to add a colour ramp actually just to strengthen the effect. Uh, but let's just copy it for the bottom one for now as well. So we're going to have another mix shade again into there. Copy the base colour. Okay, yeah, let's add in our colour ramp. Drop that in there. And then if we move the black slider to the right, you'll see that the shadowing around the edges and the text and everything gets stronger. Basically all the shadows that are in the crevices. Uh, I want that about halfway, I think. It's usually good. You don't want it too strong. And then just plug the ramp into the second uh, mix shade, mix RGB shader. Okay, that's it. Next, uh, we'll be going on to the texture.